Aloha, everybody. Aloha, Pastor Mark. Preach that word. Preach that word. We're about to, with the help of the Holy Spirit, Father, thank you for this wonderful gospel, this good news that speaks to us to bring us to salvation, that nurtures our very souls, some of us who have been walking with you for years, and that still reaches out as we've just witnessed with this wonderful report of the Harvest Crusades and Celebrate Oregon and all that you're doing in our midst. Thank you that we can call upon you and your word to walk us through a very difficult time, but a very positive God. So we turn to you now for that instruction by your spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John 14 has been our study last week, and we've got through some wonderful verses. We pick it up in verse 15. As you remember the context, it's uh, called the Upper Room Discourse still from 14, 15, 16, 17. They're in the Upper Room, but a lot has happened already. They've had the meal. They, they've, we've seen the foot washing take place from Jesus to his disciples. Judas has now betrayed him and is out of the room. And yet this conversation with Jesus to his disciples, let's emphasize that, to his believers, those who have followed him, is very intimate, very detailed, and it's filled with instruction. And we as believers need to hear what they heard that night and apply it to our lives as well. So here it is as it picks up. He says, if you love me, that should capture your attention, yeah. shouldn't it? Yeah. Jesus has been pouring out his heart to them. And it's almost, I want to read it like, if you really love me. He doesn't say that in the original. He says, if you love me, there are certain expectations with love. He's already told them how he loves them. But he says, if you're a follower of mine, if you love me, then keep my commandments. Part of our responsibility of demonstrating our love for Christ is by listening and obeying what he says. So this is a marker of a Christian. This is a, a, a marker of someone who says, yeah, I love Christ. I'm a follower of Christ. The biggest evidence of that will be keeping his commandments. Does anyone do that completely? No. That's why the cross is before us. That's why the reminders are before us that Jesus, as the perfect sacrifice, took what we could not pay, paid it, and therefore gave us his mercy and grace to continue to serve him and to seek him and to live for him. If you love me, to his disciples, keep my commandments. And he says, now, I will... Here's what I will do. And I will pray the Father, pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper. And now, once again, Jesus begins to prepare for his exit. He's been telling them there's just a little while longer for us to be together. And he is less than 24 hours, remember, of going to the cross. But he says, as you keep my commandments, I'm going to pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper. Would it be fair to say, as they've walked with Jesus these years, that he's been a helper to them? Oh, yeah. And been a wonderful helper. They have personal questions. Could you imagine walking with the 12? They have personal questions. They could just say, hey, Jesus, could you help me out with this? And that has been happening in this upper room. What do you mean this is going to happen? What, Jesus, please explain this. What, what do you mean? How do we know the way? And Jesus would respond with help. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he's been a wonderful helper, but notice the terminology, and it's fascinating in the original. He says, I'm going to ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. You've had one, but I'm going to give, ask God to give you another helper. The word in the original, another helper, is phrased as another of the same kind. So this helper that Jesus is going to pray for when he leaves to come, will be like Jesus, another of the same kind, but different than Jesus. I'm going to pray to the Father, and he is going to send you a helper, another helper of the same kind. It will be part of the Trinity. And we're not here this morning 
And matter of fact, if we had a, all the mornings of eternity, we couldn't do it. But we're not here to explain the Trinity. But enough to say that we serve a triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All are involved right in this verse. Did you see it? Jesus the Son is praying to the Father to send the Spirit when he leaves. So it's like Jesus saying, I am going, but I'm still going to be here with you. The Spirit of me, the Spirit of God the Father, the Holy Spirit himself is going to be here as a helper for you. So I'm not abandoning you. I'm not leaving you as orphans. As a matter of fact, I've got great plans for you. And as we know from last week, he's going to prepare us a place. So another helper is the term of the same kind. And he may abide with you, not for three years, not for 33 years, but forever. In God's plan, as Jesus completes his mission on earth, and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes, it's not for a short term, it's forever. So what a replacement. We have the Spirit of God now with us, dwelling, indwelling with us, and it lasts forever. And I love this term. Boy, church, do we need to know this term and embrace it more than ever. This is the Spirit of truth. The Spirit of truth. Jesus leaves, but he says the spirit of truth will come. That happens at Pentecost, and that's already happened historically, of course. But the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth comes. How refreshing is that? We live in a world that has spirits, one spirit by the enemy, Satan himself, but spirits of confusion. This world is full of spirits of anger, and spirits of evil. And it's penetrating, penetrating our society. Barbara and I were updating ourselves. We watched the real impact information from Pastor Jack Hibbs. And this bill is either very close to passing, but the, the bill that basically we talked about a couple weeks ago, if a child comes home from school and says, I identify differently, and that parent harasses the child or disagrees or bothers the child, this public school would be able to remove that child from the home with just that statement. That easy. Look it up on Real Impact. If you don't, well, I know you believe it, but if you want to know more information about it, it is becoming so evil, so chaotic. It's not a just, just about locker rooms anymore and bathrooms. It's coming right into our school. They're mandated to teach it. And if it passes, we're gonna basically see uh, kidnapping right in the own homes. So that's not a shock statement for you. It's not why I'm telling you this. Look it up if you live in California, this is California. Look it up and if you live in California, pray earnestly against it. But it's happening, my friends. We live under the spirit of evil in this state and in this nation, and it's not getting any better. But Jesus says, when I go, I'm leaving you the spirit of truth. I'm leaving you another helper, a guide, a counselor, an advocate, a teacher, all the work of the Holy Spirit. So you're not alone. None of the evil of our day catches God by surprise. Remember that. He has said it will get darker. It will get worse. But you and I are prepared. If we understand our mission, we're prepared not only to preach the gospel and praise God when people come to Christ. That solves a lot of problems. Uh, it solves their eternal issue for sure but we're still battling against all the evil that will come. And so he says, I'm sending you the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Don't miss that. This is for his disciples. This is for believers. When the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, it wasn't for the whole world. It was for believers. The whole world can become believers. Many people can come and receive Christ. But this is for believers. And as a matter of fact, he says it this way, whom the world cannot receive. You're either for me or against me. And the spirit of truth comes to believers because it neither sees him, because uh, it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. The world does not see or know Christ and the spirit of God, but you know him. And notice now, here's our connecting point for he dwells with you. Jesus is dwelling with them externally, 
But the Spirit of God comes and is in their presence now as Jesus is talking. And he dwells with you. He takes residence in you. So when we go out in this world and cite the things that I was just sharing with you, it's horrible and it should make us sick to our stomach, but we have the spirit of truth to combat it. And once again, that's why I appreciate so much the ministries of Real Impact and many others that you know of and see that are battling this on campuses uh, for behalf of your children and grandchildren and uh, others in college. It's just overtaken with something we would say absolutely never could happen. It's overtaken and with it the spirit of confusion. But this spirit of truth, this spirit of truth, he says, will be with you. Verse 18, I will not leave you orphans. He's preparing them for his departure. He's going to the cross. He's going to raise again from the grave. He's going to ascend to heaven. But when he does all that, I like the term, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Well, he, he'll come through the spirit, but he'll also come to take his church home eventually. I will not leave you at orphans. I was at the upper room uh, ministry last night, got to see Odin Fong and uh, Matthew Ward. You might remember of Odin Fong from Mustard Seed Faith back in the day. And Matthew Ward was part of the second chapter of Acts. And uh, they, they did a great concert. It was a full house at Calvary Chapel, Mission Viejo. Some friends of mine came, some old Young Life kids came down. We had a great time. But at a point in um, Matthew's uh, concert, he sang a song. He said, I wrote this as a prayer, and now every time I perform it, I ask God ahead of time, how do you want me to present it? And he said, tonight I want to present it as I sing it to you, anyone you know that is suffering with mental illness or if you're suffering with depression, and he went through that a short time after he had dealt with cancer and lost a daughter and just a, a difficult time in his life. And so this beautiful time of singing and prayer and uh, pre just let me set this part up. Previous this week, over this last four or five days, uh, I, I've been uh, praying and dealing with two missing person issues from some friends that, that asked me to pray. One of them was a girl named Sarah who went to Maui on vacation. She's from the Pacific Northwest. And in the last couple of weeks, she went to Maui, 30 year old, and had a good vacation and decided to extend it by a couple of days. And she went missing on Tuesday. So I get this flyer and and uh, happens to meet my daughter's friend uh, connection. She goes, dad, could you pray with, with us on this? And, would you mind letting you know our family on Maui know my sister and family lives over on Maui as you know. So I sent the little digital flyer to them and I said, would you guys pray for this girl named Sarah? And uh, They haven't seen her since Tuesday. And so Matthew's praying for the mental illness portion. I look at my phone and my niece responds by a text and says, my friend, Mao spoke to her a couple days ago. He, he knows that they know that she's missing. He spoke to her. I said, oh my goodness, I'll let Emily know that'll be an encouragement. There was a sighting since Tuesday. So I shared that with Emily and immediately Emily responds. She's up in Yosemite with her youth group. And she responds and says, dad, they found her. They just found her. And so I'm, I'm praying and I'm hearing Matthew pray, and I get a text from Maui and a text from Yosemite over a missing girl, and she had had a mental breakdown. That's why she went missing. And the Maui Police Department found her. Today at five o'clock, I'm meeting with the mother of another missing person who's been gone for three weeks. His name is Aaron. So I'm gonna meet with her and pray with her. If you'd pray for Aaron, that's been three weeks. He's also in his third also struggles with mental illness. The world is caving in, but the Spirit of God indwells in us. He hears our prayers. They don't all turn out like this. I'm not suggesting that. But we want to use the power of the Holy Spirit that is indwelling each of us. We want to make sure that we're indwelt, baptized, whatever you want to call it, filled to overflowing, leaking on everybody else, however you find that description, and say, Spirit of truth, 
would you intervene? And in the course of a half hour, I watched that last night. And I'm asking, and I'll share that story with this mom carefully, but I'm asking God to do it again for this son who has gone missing three weeks. That's why we're here. That the Spirit of God indwells us and we pray over young children, we pray over physical diseases, healings, broken bones, all of that. But however God does that, we present truth to a world that knows the spirit of darkness. Jesus says, I'm not leaving you as an orphan. I'm not leaving you as orphans, but I'm sending the spirit to come and dwell with you. Well, with that in mind, he continues, a little while longer and the world will see me no more. He's just explained, you're gonna be indwelt by the Holy Spirit, but the world's not gonna see me, but you will see me because I live you will live also because of the resurrection power you're having the same power in your lives on this earth and of course into eternity because i live you will live also and at that day you will know that i am in my father and you in me and i in you i am pulling this whole thing together he who has my commandments and keeps them, as he had just stated, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me and he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. There are some tremendous benefits to keeping God's commandments. Forget about the perfection but saying, I'm lining up with the word of God. I'm studying the word of God. I'm convicted when I stray away from the word of God. I'm going to memorize it, meditate on it, study it, because that's where the spirit of truth dwells as he dwells in me. I'm going to take my time in this world that's given to me, and I'm going to know it. And as a result, as I keep God's commandments, I'm going to feel God's love. If you've ever felt insecure with God's love, here's a great place to start. Obey him. First tell him, God, I feel distant from you and I want to press right back into you. I want to be a part of your word, part of your church, whatever. None of that legalism stuff, don't confuse it. I just want to be right with you. And he'll say, thank you, I love you. Here's your instruction. <clears throat> here's your marching orders. You'll not be perfect at it, but my spirit will be there to give you truth and to give you guidance. I'm not leaving you. I want to manifest myself in you. All of a sudden, there's an interruption. The name Judas always captures our attention. But remember, this is the other Judas. First, Judas has gone out. He's giving away the Messiah for money. But the other Judas, the other disciple named Judas, he is not, to John's clarification, not Iscariot. He says to Jesus, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Good question. You're the helper. You help me with this, Jesus. By the way, that's a great way to approach scripture. A lot, a lot of times in my study for Sundays or midweek studies or whatever, uh, I'm talking to someone. I will ask God, I don't get this. And thankfully, there's other people that can help us. But usually it's by other scripture and praying and saying, I, I don't get that. I If you back up to the top, I always am amazed and I, I overcomplicate things. But there in verse 16, and I will pray the Father in New King James. I will pray the Father and he will give you. I go, why does it say I will pray the Father? I will pray to the Father. I'll pray to my Father. It's the same thing. Mark just complicates it. I look in three different versions. They're all different. Pray to the Father. Then I can go forward again. That's kind of what Judas is doing here. He says, wait a minute. Could, could you explain how it is that you will manifest yourself to us, but not to the world? I mean, we live here in the world. Is that a trick? You know, how do you do that? He's being honest. Be honest when you study scripture. Scripture interprets other scripture. Look around, ask questions. There's no dumb questions with God. And so Judas is asking the question and Jesus answers and said to him, if anyone loves me, that's how he started. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, my commandments. 
And my father will give him, excuse me, will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. The world can't do that, Judas. This is for believers. You will receive things that the world can't get because they don't want to believe. He who does not love me, the world, he who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. There are a lot of churches meeting right now at the 10 o'clock hour and other times. And they will have songs and they will have hugs. According to Bob Bennett, they won't have the same quality of hospitality. <laughs> Do you hear him say that last week? He put it on Facebook. He filmed our hospitality table and put it on Facebook. He was there last night. I saw him and, and uh, got a big kick out of that. There, there will be churches that, that meet and they'll be called different things, but they won't teach this. And they certainly won't study it. Or if they do, they will twist it and ignore it and rebrand it. And as a result, they won't love God. It will look like they love God. Matter of fact, it'll look very inclusive. We love everybody. Welcome here. And it has that appearance. But if we don't keep his commandments, we don't love God. It kind of simplifies it, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's very easy for me to say, I love God. But if you find me living a different lifestyle, then according to Jesus' words, then I am not only fake, but I'm out of step and out of relationship. I love the verse again. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. That's called unity with God, proper unity. He who does not love me does not keep my word and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. It's just backed up in every direction by the father, by the son, and by the Holy Spirit who will indwell you. So if you're going to be indwelled as a believer of God with the spirit of truth, you better expect conflict. And you can watch it and hear it all over. But whether we see the spirit of truth prevail as we did with this wonderful report we just watched, 4,500 baptisms, thousands of professions of faith. But if we present the spirit of truth, the spirit of confusion and the spirit of evil will rear its ugly head as it is in our society and will combat it. And that will include you. You will be called names. You will be called bigoted. But the love of Christ always prevails. I like how he closes the chapter. It's the wonderful offer of a gift of peace. You, you know this chapter. You know your Jesus. Just sit at his feet there in the upper room as he finalizes some of this over these chapters that we're studying. These things, he says, I spoken to you while in your presence, while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit that he's just been talking about, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance. I love this verse. He will bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you, the message of the Spirit will be no different than the message of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So when you see the bizarre in our day and age happening in churches and all the craziness of the last few decades come out from laughing in the Spirit to barking like dogs to whatever, and the Spirit overtook me and I couldn't help it, false. Because Jesus never did it and never endorses it. And when you hear all the prosperity gospel stuff and you see all the bizarre stuff that seems weird to your natural spirit, but certainly bizarre to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and they're proclaiming it is the Holy Spirit, you'll say, I'm sorry, Jesus said with his own words, the Spirit is exactly like me. 
And he's not going to teach some other false doctrine, false gospel. You know what you get from Jesus and the spirit of truth and the Father? Here it is. It's in this beautiful 27th verse. He leaves it right there in your lap. Peace, I leave with you. My peace, notice how specific. I'm not gonna just shalom high five you, which is a wonderful way to greet people. Shalom, it's peace. But peace I leave with you, more specifically, my peace I give to you, not like the world. My peace is very different. My peace comforts in the midst of the storm. My peace is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And no matter what's going on in your life, the peace I'm leaving with you through the Spirit of God and the Word of God and the presence of God living in your life will walk you through anything. Doesn't mean you'll like it. Doesn't mean your heart won't be troubled. That's how he started this chapter. But it'll be there. And we can live in 2023 and have the peace of God, the peace from God given to us, unlike the world gives or offers, he says, do I give to you? And then he repeats the phrase, let not your heart be troubled. Remember again from last week, their hearts were very troubled because Jesus was leaving. But now they have the instruction. You don't have to have your heart troubled because though I leave, I'm not leaving you as an orphan. I'm leaving you with the, my spirit and you have instant access. You have power, you have peace now he's offering through this gift as well. So your heart doesn't have to be troubled and it doesn't have to be afraid. I embrace those verses. Some of the fearful times of my life, and certainly the times of trouble, I wanna know exactly what Jesus is talking about and I wanna know how to access it. It's through his word and it's through the spirit. And certainly through the church doing what we're called to do for each other. But the spirit and the word will instruct us and care for us and through prayer. I want that. And Jesus says, it's yours, Mark. Peace I leave with you. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. You've heard me say I'm going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, that's the third time it's in there. If you loved me, you would be rejoicing because of what I say here. I'm going to the Father and my Father is greater than I am. I'm going away and coming back to you. And if you love me or you understand this and you really love me, you would be happy not only for your benefit, but for my benefit. I get to see my dad. I get to go and prepare a place for you. And if you really understand what that looks like, not only would you be happy for me and rejoicing, but you'd be happy for yourselves because I'm coming back. I need to go before I come back. And I'm coming back. And I'm going to my father. You think at this point, just the humanity of Jesus alone longed to see his father. Remember, the cross stands before him and his father. I'm going to my father, but I have to go by the way of the cross. And all the suffering and all the sacrifice is included. I'm going to my father for my father is greater than I. I'm going for my benefit, but I'm going for your benefit. Here's the close. And now... I have told you before it comes. This is very gracious of God. Not only do his disciples in the upper room, but for what we're doing right now, reading this. He's going, hey church, I'm telling you all this before it happens. So when it does happen, when it does come to pass, you may believe. This, what we are watching right now in these last days is exactly what Revelation talks about, exactly what the end days looks like, Wherever you put the time frame, I don't hang myself up there. This is exactly a world falling apart. And he's told us before it happened. So we should be not surprised at all. We should be fueled up. We should be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. We should be plugged in and not playing any games with God because he told us this was gonna happen. 
and reminds us as again at us again as this closes. I'm telling you this before it happens, so when it happens, you may believe. I will not much longer talk with you, for the ruler of the world is coming. That's a reference directly to Satan. The ruler of the world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Though the ruler of the world is heavy and powerful and destroys, he has nothing compared to Christ. He is nothing compared to Christ. And Jesus acknowledges it. Whatever is going on, whatever is taking place, the ruler of the world has nothing in me. But that this world may know that I have and love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. And I tell you, look at this little human statement here for us at the end. Hey, everybody, get up, Jesus says. Let us go from here. Let, let's wrap up the upper room business and go from here. And when they leave, the hours that follow will put everything he has just taught into capital letters. I've told you before it happens. So when it happens, you'll believe. You know what happens if you're not reading the word? If you're not aware of these things and you profess Christ, you become troubled and afraid. I'm not going to say I'm surprised when I see Christians in that position, but usually it's a telling statement, and I say it carefully. It's a telling statement that they're drifting away from God, or at least his word. And I, I want to say, I'm careful, but I want to say, what did you expect? It's right here. Look at the back pages of your Bible. It's happening, and it will happen. But God has told us ahead of time so that we can press in and believe even more. The most powerful days of your faith journey may be just ahead of you, depending on how you approach it. And God says, hey, I'm leaving you equipped. You're not an orphan. I'm leaving you, I'm giving you, I'm leaving you peace and I'm giving you my spirit. Any takers? <laughs> yeah, that's what I need and that's what I want. Let's pray together. Your word is powerful and true. As you spoke it to the disciples after this meal, this Passover meal, your heart was burning as it does for us today. And by your gift of peace and mercy and grace, you've allowed us to have our own copies of the word of God today to say, look, I'm telling you all of this, people, as it's all coming down. Of course this world is confused. Of course our children are being manipulated by a spirit of untruth. Of course the evils that we don't even want to talk about or conceive of are happening. But you've put your church right here for us to pray for confused people, missing people, hurting people, drifting people who have been saturated with life. And we walk in with the spirit of truth and by that touch, God, you bring hope and you can bring faith and you can bring the miraculous. So we pray that. Would you give us encounters this very day with people that need your truth? First, reaffirm it with us. Fill us again anew with your spirit, but then put us in the pathway of people that have bought the lie too long and need to hear your truth. Whatever our occupation, whatever our position in life, whatever our age, put us in the pathway, God, and let us minister all over this world. And thank you for this wonderful gift that you remind us in John 14, that it's your peace we can embrace, not like the world does, not like the world offers, but your peace that we can embrace and hold and be at peace with so our hearts are not troubled or afraid. Just before we leave this morning, would you just receive that peace that Jesus is offering you right now? It's a gift. You have to receive it. Take a moment to receive it and thank him for it before you leave this place. Peace, peace, wonderful peace.
coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray. In fathomless billows of love. Would you lift your hands and just sing that again to him? Peace, peace, one. 